Hi, uh, so for those of you who don't know me, my name is Mike Price, and I create art using dead animals. Uh, roadkill, to be more specific. These roadkill specimens act as both references for my drawings and as for actual sculptural medium in the form of both taxidermy and preserved specimen. And in this context, otherwise known as artistic taxidermy, as opposed to commercial and prop taxidermy and trophy taxidermy that all of us are familiar with. So when I say roadkill, uh, I imagine that a lot of you are picturing this, a spattering of blood and guts and fur that we encounter on the roadside on a weekly, if not daily, basis. And in the past six months, I have become increasingly interested in the imagery of roadkill. And more than that, the psychology of roadkill. Uh, the fact that for many of us, when we see roadkill, we don't really think twice about it. You know, we don't stop and look at it. We don't stop and like, oh, really feel for it. You know, we, don't, we certainly don't stop our car to, to bury the animal. Or at the very least, move it from the center of the road. A lot of us, you know, we just drive right over it. You know, because, you know, we're in our cars, we're driving to work, and this thing is just an object to us. We have a place to be, we have, you know, a mindset, we have a specific goals in our day, and this is not something that we are concerned with. So, the fact that we have a society have really kind of dismissed these once living things almost entirely, and they're viewed as just that, an object, this really kind of inconveniencing presence is something that I'm super interested in. So one of my first explorations through taxidermy was to simply take roadkill, preserve it as I found it, and present it in a context that you are kind of forced to confront it. The exact same thing on the side of the road that you wouldn't look twice at here somehow tugs on your heartstrings. Why is that? So through really exploring this kind of psychological phenomenon, I've come to find that this is really just a small insight into a much larger aspect of our society. So kind of having seen the, the picture of that fox and then this raccoon, I want you to think now like if it was a human on the side of the road, and why is that so different? We've become totally removed from the fact that we are organic, the fact that we are living things just like any other animal. The fact that we are just as fragile, and in some cases, like deer, we are more fragile than these animals that we see on the side of the road. So this is likely not what you think of when you see roadkill. This picture was taken in my living room just before I skinned this fox. Uh, he was found on an off-ramp in Kentucky not far from here, and probably was hit no more than an hour before I brought him home. Uh, and it's always odd to me kind of thinking back and reflecting on the actual series of events, the actual process of stopping my car, picking up this animal, bringing it into my home, skinning it, dissecting it, photographing it, preserving its organs, cleaning the bones, and then disposing of the waste. Because none of this is the art. But it is a huge part of the finished product and a very time-consuming process, one that really shows no trace in these finished pieces. So I kind of want to say this in hopes that uh, you can all relate a little bit. Because not knowing me, you might be thinking at this point, you know, this guy is really weird. He just brings animals into his house and cuts them up. So I want to reassure you that this is, real, this is not really my favorite part here. Uh, in fact, after I've gone through these steps described and I clean up and I leave for the day, or maybe it's nighttime and I go to sleep, uh, it's when I come back or when I wake up the next day that I am bombarded in my own home by this lingering smell. Almost not even a smell, almost a presence. It is the smell of death a reminder that a dead animal was in my home. And that part uh, I really dislike. <laughs> and it makes me hate this process sometimes. And it makes me think about death, and it makes me wish that I had another place to skin animals other than my living room. <laughs> but I am so infatuated with this phenomenon that I described in the beginning, I'm so unendingly interested in exploring this aspect of our society, and I'm even so interested in images like this that I have no choice. I have no choice but to take these necessary steps in order to acquire the images needed for my drawings and the raw materials that I need for the taxidermy. So in these drawings, and here's an example of one here, there are a way for me to talk about this kind of thing without having to force anyone to come to a public dissection and actually look, to look at what's inside the body. Rather, in these drawings, I present a very highly rendered uh, organic form so the medium is powdered graphite, and it's slowly rubbed into the surface, creating a very rich contrast of grays, but on an entirely flat surface. So the viewer is kind of drawn in, and these are some detail shots here, 
uh, to this abstract imagery, I try to achieve what to me is a beautiful image, a beautiful object. And the more you look, the more you see that this might in fact be something dead. Tiny hairs start to present themselves. You see veins or muscle structures, or perhaps even look to see, see what are entire limbs here. So in these drawings, I attempt to get people to look at dead animals without knowing it, to question what it is they're seeing, to perhaps wonder if it's human, trying to figure out what's what, and reflecting on themselves, thinking about their own bodies, thinking about what's inside themselves, only to find out, you know, after reading an artist statement or talking with me, that these are nothing more than roadkill. Uh, these are simply drawings of juxtaposed roadkill images, images that I've acquired during the process described earlier that happens sometimes, regretfully, in my living room. And because, for me, the important moments in these works happen, once the viewer does get past this initial kind of gross or just unfamiliarity, or sometimes if I can force them to kind of bypass those feelings entirely, in many ways when we see roadkill on the road, we see the insides of these animals as being alien to us. And to quote Sarah Tucker from a, a recent critique, she was referring to people when she said that we don't like to think of each other as being vessels. And this is something that has really stuck with me, which is exactly what I'm referring to in these drawings. Uh, you know, we're all just bags moving around the planet filled with blood and guts and bone. Everything we know and experience is something that isn't even tangible, but we associate all this with the real world. So Jane acts this way, so Jane is this way, right? But Jane is not anything tangible. Jane has a body, but Jane is an idea. What we don't like to think about is the fact that the physical Jane, what we see, is just a body. She is a vessel, a very fragile vessel. But Jane's not the only one that we don't think of this way. It's further down the line that we are confronted sometimes daily with this conundrum, and we almost always choose to ignore it. And again, that's with roadkill. With animals, vessels, just like us. And I just keep asking myself, why are we so unwilling to look at what's inside? And these works, for me, are a way to answer those questions. Thank you.